All right, good morning. Can I guess I'm on on the mic? OK, good. Um, good morning. And in terms, of, I think, what was advertised, I think it was just called Hay Economics. And, and really, I'm only going to focus on one thing, and that's your, your fixed cost of hay production. Um, you know, when I thought about this, um, I don't. I hardly do anything with alfalfa hay, um, and, and you all know your cash costs, your your variable cost of production, a lot better than I, I ever will. So one thing I I do I got, got got a pretty good handle on, and that's your depreciation interest um, cost, and and a lot of people kind of tend to ignore that in the short run, long run you obviously can't. Um, anyways, I figured that might be the best place that I can potentially help you out, provide some value. So we're going to focus on that if, if that's all right with you. Um, by the way, I, th I've, I don't think I've ever had so many wires on me in my life. I feel like I'm in the ICU or something. So if, if I trip or something, that's, I'm going to sue the university. <laughs> All right, so to get us started with fixed costs, just very quickly, we're going to talk about fixed and variable costs, the difference between the two, just, just because I want you to understand how boring this could be if we spent 40 minutes on this. Um, so think about your fixed and variable costs. And let's start with variable costs. And, and by the way, I've never found a perfect definition between the two. These are kind of a compilation of a few different ones that I've kind of come up with on my own. But in general, this isn't 100%, but in general, think about if you increase your production just a little bit. And, and so I've got eight number of acres, number of cows there. Obviously, you're making alfalfa hay. So think if, if, I, if I add another 50 acres of alfalfa hay or 10 acres, what costs are going to increase almost proportionally to that? And those generally would, will be your variable costs of production. Um, most of the time, it's, it's what you all would consider probably cash costs. Um, so fuel's kind of the, the perfect example. You know, if I increase my acres by, by 10 or 50, you can pretty well know how much extra fuel you're going to have, right? Uh, seed, in terms of you know, reseeding every four or five years, same type of thing. Those are kind of your cash, your cash costs, variable costs of production. Fixed costs is, is kind of the opposite of that. So same thing, if you increase your production a little bit, 10, 50 acres or so, these costs, they might move a little bit, but in general, they're not going to change a whole lot. Uh, they're going to remain about the same. And generally, you call those kind of your non-cash costs. So what would be some good examples of, of fixed costs, given that definition? Equipment depreciation, and that's one we're going to focus on. There are some, and that's the, the biggest one. Uh, related to equipment depreciation is something that goes hand in hand with that. What is it? And it's, it's a cost that, that is real easy to forget, more so than depreciation. If, I, if I've got a quarter million dollars in equipment, even if I self-financed it, what, what other costs do I have there? interest on that equipment, right? And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Those are the big ones, and that's what we're going to concentrate on. There are other fixed costs. Um, your farm insurance policy is probably a good example. You can probably you know, expand your operations a little bit. That cost isn't going to change. Uh, property taxes, you know, there's, there's a bunch of smaller ones, but by far you know, the ones that we're going to be concerned about are, are depreciation interest on that equipment. Um, so one question is, why do we care in terms of differentiating? They're all costs, right? So why be concerned what's variable, what's fixed? And this is pretty important. So I want you to kind of think about it. In the end, it doesn't matter, right? A cost is a cost. We subtract it off our revenues. And, and that bottom number, hopefully, it's positive. That's, that's our profit, right? Why do we care if it's variable or fixed? So the, the, the comment, I'm not going to say it was the answer. The comment was, and I like it, you, could, you can live a little bit longer with one and not the other. And that's, that's pretty good, and we'll, we'll come back to that, actually. So let me get you thinking. Wh which of those are easier to estimate, your fixed costs or, or your variable costs of production? Let, let's, let's see a, a show of hands. Who says variable costs of production are easier to estimate? Who says fixed? Now, so let me just get to the answer. It's variable cost of production. But it's easy to think fixed because... If fixed don't change a whole lot, you should know them pretty easy, right? But that's assuming one minor thing, that you know what they are that first time, right? And if you don't, so let me give you a quick example. And you may not have done this, but I guarantee you, probably everyone in here, if I asked you, I want you to estimate how much fuel you have in a ton of hay, it may take you five minutes, but I guarantee you can come up with a real close estimate. So just as an example with mowing, 
if you can mow four acres per hour and you know your tractor used about four gallons of diesel per hour, really, if you can figure out roughly how many gallons, multiply it by it if it's 225 or 250 a gallon, do that for all your operations, and you might be off a little bit, but I bet you'll be within 25, 30%. If I ask you how much fixed costs in terms of depreciation interest you have in a ton of hay, what are you gonna tell me? I have no idea, right? Um, so that's what I'm getting at. In other words, if you know them one time, yeah, they're not gonna change a whole lot from one year to the next, but the key again is what? You gotta know them that first time. So in general, most people can, can figure out the variable cost of production a whole lot easier. Um, and this, I think, is what you were getting at here a minute ago. Can you cover your ver just your variable cost in production and stay in business? The answer is what? Say it a little bit louder. A little, a little while, right? And that might be five years, 10 years, 15, or, or whatever. But the answer is, and that's the problem with them, they kind of sneak up on us, right? And they're real easy to ignore in the short run, uh, especially if you don't have an actual loan on that equipment, right? If you have a loan that's a little hard to ignore, you're writing that check. Uh, I see a few bankers in here. Uh, you're writing that check. But even if you self-finance that, when that equipment starts wearing out, if you haven't paid out, if you haven't covered those those fixed costs of production, what happens? You go to the you you go to the the dealership down here at the street, and and you start pricing out new equipment, and you have sticker shock, right? Uh, so that's why I really want to focus on fixed costs, is because they're unfortunately easy to ignore, kind of in the short run, just like I think as you're saying, uh, but in the long run, obviously. They're actually one of our most important costs. Maybe for some folks, the, the most important cost. Um, I'm just thinking, this is really the first time I've done this, and, and I, so I'm not quite as polished as I would normally be. I'm trying to think if, if we need to cover anything else here. Um, I think we're good. All right, so what are your biggest, so this alfalfa conference, let's assume that we're just talking alfalfa or alfalfa mixed state here. What are your biggest production costs? You know, throughout, pro, you know, insurance, those type of things, but, and, and I'm trying to help you out here. So probably, you know, your, your establishment costs, right? You know, your, your seed, fertilizer, drilling it, potentially herbicide, those kind of things. I'm just lumping them all together in those establishment costs. Then when you're actually getting ready in, in May, cutting everything, you know, fuel is, is a big one. Repairs, maintenance on that equipment, uh, labor, land, and, and then I'm putting kind of at the bottom depreciation interest. Um, and that's obviously the one that we're going to focus on here today. In fact, that's all we're going to pretty much talk about for the rest of this presentation. All right, so before we kind of get into some scenarios I'm going to lay out for you to try to help you understand these, there's, there's three kind of general concepts that that we, we need to understand, I think, to, to really understand fixed costs. Uh, the first one is when, when I talk about depreciation, I mean real depreciation, not IRS depreciation. Do you all understand the difference between the two? According to the IRS, you buy a new tractor and it's fully depreciated and worthless in how many years? Seven, I think they're, I think, and I'm not an accountant, and I, in fact, I try not to understand the tax law because that gives me excuse not to answer questions, but I think that may have been changed to five. I don't know that for sure, but, I th but regardless, five or seven years or, or even 10 years, hopefully that tractor is not worthless at the end of 10 years, right, or seven years or five years. Hopefully it's worth at least half of what we bought it for or, or a whole lot more. So in other words, even though we typically think about depreciation or most of us in terms of tax depreciation, Tax depreciation is there for one purpose only, right? And that's to figure out what you can deduct on your tax. It is not real depreciation. So we're, when I say depreciation, I mean real depreciation. Second one is, and, and this is going to be a little confusing, so, but I'll work you through it. There's a fixed and variable component to depreciation. So even though I'm, I'm saying depreciation is a fixed cost, it's not entirely true. Part of depreciation, probably the bulk of it for most people is gonna be fixed, but part is gonna be variable. And, and let me give you an analogy to, to help you understand that. So let's say you buy two new tractors. Let's say these are top of line, big $100,000 tractors. You immediately park one in your, your equipment shed, don't use it at all for, for a year. The other tractor, two identical tractors. The other one, you, you work, work like a mule, you put say 750 hours in one year on that tractor, at the end of that one year you go to sell both tractors. The one that you put, that you parked in the barn, didn't put a single hour on, are you gonna get as much as you 
when you sell that, are you going to get as much as you bought it for? Answer is no. That is the fixed aspect of depreciation. Doesn't matter if you use that equipment or not, it's going to go down in value. Now, are you going to get as much for that tractor that you put 750 hours on as you did as one you parked in the barn? Answer is no. That is what? The variable part of depreciation. So it's really a combination of variable and fixed. For most people, the fix is going to outweigh the variable, uh, but it will depend on the scenario, and we'll look at a few. Does that make sense? Okay, again, I'm not a tax accountant, and I don't, and I don't want to be, but that's, I thought I heard that. So he said that st starting in 2018, it is five years for depreciation. Again, we're talking real depreciation, not IRS tax depreciation. The last one is this, is this little minor detail about interest. And for whatever reason, a lot of farmers don't like to think about interest. Now, if you, again, if you have a loan, it's kind of hard to ignore. You write that check, uh, you pretty well know it's real cost. But... Let's say you sell finance a piece of equipment for $50,000. Should you, you're not actually going to write a check to yourself, but should you consider that a cost? Opportunity cost. So why should we maybe consider it opportunity cost? You could, you could have done something else with that money. And the argument I've heard the last three or four years is that, well, I put it in the bank, I get a half a percent or something like that, so I kind of ignore it, which kind of makes sense, right? So... I will give you that scenario in one, in assuming one other thing. You don't have any other outstanding loans on your farm. So let's say you've got $100,000 of loans elsewhere. Let's say a mortgage on your farm at 5%. If you sell finance that $50,000 piece of equipment, guess what you just gave up doing? Paying off part of that loan, right, for, for 5%. So in other words, whatever the highest outstanding loan that you have on your farm, that's probably your cost of capital because you could have just paid that down. Uh, so those that are fortunate to not have any loans outstanding on the farm, then we can talk about what was, if we put it in the bank, get a half a percent, probably 1% now or something like that. Some relatively you know, risk-free, and I, I'll buy that. That's, that's acceptable. Well, then give me the money. I'll get the Exactly. And I, I say the same things a couple of times. You, I'll give you 2%. Fork it over. Uh, anyway, so we, we want to, even though we may not be writing ourselves a check, you, you probably want to consider that an actual cost. All right, so let's, any questions up to here? That was the boring part. Hopefully now we'll get a little more exciting. We're all good, all on board? All right. What we're going to do now is look at a few different scenarios, and, and these are going to help you, and essentially you're going to try to pick out the scenario that is most representative of your farm, um, and then we can kind of figure out, or you can try to figure out what your fixed costs are in a per ton of, of hay produced base. So let's start with a quarter million dollars of hay capital. Um, I'll, Again, this is just an example, and don't worry so much about what actually, what every single piece of equipment is worth. Just think about what, I, what you have in equipment and what that comes up to be. This is just an example for what it is. So here's our, our equipment line on the left. Here's our initial value, and, and that doesn't mean new value. That means whatever you typically, if you buy typically five-year-old equipment, you know, whatever that would be when you'd buy for youth. So think about it in that. Some of this is new, some is probably used. Um, so we've got three tractors here, baler, mower, rake, tetter, accumulator, some miscellaneous, you know, wag, uh, we probably got a trailer to move hay, a few wagons, some, and some miscellaneous items. Um, again, don't worry so much about individual pieces of equipment. Think about, you know, if you add up all everything on your farm, what, it, what would it come out to be? Now, one minor thing with your tractors particularly, some of this equipment may be used for other, op other enterprise, particularly tractors. For instance, if you do a little bit of grain or you have cattle, you actually want to try to allocate that based on, I typically tell people, the percent of hours you use for the different enterprise. So here I'm just assuming that 70% 70, 70 of the time you're using the tractors for the hay operation, 30% of the time for something else, but it could be the other way around, right? So, in other words, do that same thing with, with your tractors if you use them for other uh, enterprise to, to adjust that capital. So, in other words, what we want to do, and, of course, for everything else, 100% for the, for the hay, you might use a trailer for something else if, if you do, you know, adjust that, but probably most of those is going to be close to 100%. So, for the tractors, it's just really easy. You multiply whatever that initial value is, whether you buy it used or, or new, by that percentage, and that gives us $45,000. 
do that for the other two tractors, um, we, we get 24 and 14,000. The rest of it's 100 percent, so it's just going to be you know whatever your start value is. We add those in, and we add all those up, and guess what we get? $250,000. Again, don't worry about those individual pieces of equipment. Think about your operation. If, if you did that same thing, adjusting for other enterprise, what would you be close to? Any questions there? Oh, I sorry, didn't even realize we have two screens here. I can toggle back and forth between the two. All right, so now what we're going to do here is, is we're going to kind of show you how we're going to depreciate this equipment out, what interest rate I'm going to use um, to come up with. And this is important stuff in terms of how we actually come out with total depreciation. So what I'm going to assume here is that that equipment every year, even if we parked it in the barn, is going to depreciate by $5,000. In other words, it's going to lose $5,000 in value every year, even if it's parked in the barn. That's that base depreciation, the fixed component. The variable component would be this next one. Every, ton, every additional ton of, of hay that we produce with that equipment, it's going to depreciate by that amount, $4 per ton. And I'll show you a little table so, to help you cal see if you think you know, these are reasonable numbers here in a minute. I'm going to use 4% interest rate. Think of that as, as a real interest rate. So in other words, uh, if a loan on equipment right now is 6%, this year inflation has been a lot higher than it has been. I think it's been close to 2%. So in other words, whatever the, the loan rate is minus the inflation rate, that would be your real interest rate. And I'll tell you a little bit more later why we're going to try to take out inflation from, from this just to not confuse things. Um, so this would be... And let me walk you through it. This is essentially how much the equipment would be worth if we parked it in the barn and, and if we put different levels of, of use on, on that equipment. Um, so we start with year zero. That's what we bought all that for, so $250,000. And then here's where it's going to vary depending on how much we use that equipment. So if we, if we park that equipment in the barn, and if it depreciates at $5,000 per year in that scenario, it, in the end of five years, year five, that equipment would be worth $225,000. If we put 500 ton, or if we produce 500 tons of hay with that equipment every year for five years, it would be worth about $215,000. And if we you know, produced 100 or 1,000 uh, tons of hay, so that would be what? How many acres of alfalfa? Two, two to 250, somewhere in that range. Um, it would go down to about 205,000 after five years. And if we put a lot, you know, we really produced with that equipment uh, more in the 500 acre range, it would be down to about 185,000. Now, this is approximation. This is not based on actual data because there is no good data to use for this. And, and it will depend on what? It'll depend on the type of equipment you have. Uh, if you have newer equipment, it's going to depreciate a little quicker than, than used equipment, right, at, at that same price. Um, some brands of equipment might cost a little bit more. They're going to depreciate a little slower, et cetera. So in other words, this, think of this as a start. We can tweak this a little bit. But what I really want to show you, the main concepts of, of how depreciation and interest change on a per ton base by how much you use that equipment, kind of those general concepts will, will stay valid. Uh, so don't be so concerned about this. I can actually adjust this, and, and I'll mention this later on, but if, if you actually want me to kind of run this for your farm, it won't take us very long, five minutes. We can do it by phone call or, or email. It, in other words, if you have a better estimate of your own depreciation interest, we, we can kind of fine-tune it for your farm. Now, if, I, if, if I'm coming close here, this is kind of how I would calibrate it. So think about, you, think about if you're buying this equipment, not necessarily selling it, but if you're buying this equipment, and you have a choice of buying this equipment that sat in the barn for five years. What, you know, let's assume they went out once a month and started the tractors just to keep, you know, make sure they're not gumming up or anything, uh, versus equipment that, that you produce 500 tons of hay a year for five years. Which of those would you rather buy at those two prices? In other words, if I did this right, you, for the average person, should be about indifferent between those two. Because if, if everyone here raised their hand and said they, they would rather buy the equipment that was parked in the barn, then I've got to adjust those values a little bit, or vice versa, if that makes sense. So if you're the average person here, you should be pretty close to being indifferent between those two if, if you were buying that equipment. 
So anyone here feel, feel real strongly they would rather have one or the other? You, you would have the equipment that was parked in the barn. Okay. Let's have a quick show of hands. Who would rather have the equipment that was parked in the barn for 225000 I understand. <laughs> and who would rather have that equipment that we put, that we essentially had about 100 acres, 125 acres a year for five years for $10,000 less? Who would rather have that? Probably me too. Okay, so we can adjust that later on if you want. Now, that said, let me, let me show you something that might change your minds. For those that, that voted, they'd rather have equipment for that that was parked in the barn. Most people don't fully appreciate how much depreciation they have because we have a little thing that goes on called inflation. So let me give you some context on this, just with a few different scenarios, and let me walk you through this table here. So let's say every scenario we buy that equipment for $250,000, just like we talked about. Um, then what I'm going to do is show you, and, and by the way, I'm putting this back five years ago, so, 2000, so imagine you bought that equipment 2014 and, and you're getting ready to you know, sell it today, 2019. Now understand that dollars in 2019 aren't the same thing as they were in 14, right? And that's what we're going to make adjustment for. So that would be not 2019 dollars. Then I'm going to give you an inflation rate, and then what we're going to do is adjust that, those what, what you could have sold it for in, in 2019 from 2019 dollars to 2014 dollars. It might surprise you how much it changed it, so just be prepared. All right, so here's what we came up with. So in other words, that equipment's worth $225,000 in today's dollars. Now, if we had no inflation, 0%, in, in 2014 dollars, that would be worth the same thing. In other words, Without inflation, there's no change. That's the only scenario that's true. So let's say that equipment was actually, you could sell it for $236,000 today, in today's dollars. If we had 1% inflation over that time period every year, what would, the, what would that $236,000, what would that come down to in $14 is the question. Even at 1%, it would drop it to $225,000. In other words, you thought that equipment Depreciated by what? $14,000, right? It really depreciated by how much? By $25,000. That's with 1% inflation. All right, so let me give you another one. So let's say you could sell that equipment for $248,000 today, five years later. You thought that equipment depreciated how much? $2,000. Or, or essentially, you're saying it doesn't depreciate at all. If we had 2% inflation over that time period each year, by the way, last year's we've had about 2%, what would the actual value of that equipment be in 2014 dollars? 225,000. In other words, you thought it didn't depreciate. Did that equipment depreciate? You bet. Inflation can mask depreciation. So just keep that in mind. And just for fun, let's, let's put in there what we're showing. So we're, in other words, equipment five years ago is 250,000. You, you can sell it today for 225,000. Let's say over that time period you had 1% inflation. What was the real, so in other words, you thought that equipment depreciated 25,000. What did it really depreciate by? 36,000. So again, depreciate, or inflation really unfortunately masked the true extent of, of depreciation. It's usually a whole lot more than we think. Um, okay, so let me go back. So, if we bought that equipment five years ago for 250, in 2014 for 250000 if we parked that equipment in the barn, which of those would be close to what it would sell for today? I don't know. I'm asking you all. In other words, I, I need your help to calibrate me. In today's dollars. I understand. So you got to give me an average, right? We can, we can. All right. So think about it again. If you want me to custom run a when we and you don't, you'll see better what I'm doing here. But if, if you want me to kind of customize this for your farm, it's real easy. But you're going to have to tell me what that what that drop in price is, if that makes sense. I can help you. Then. Depreciation. Okay. So that. 
So you're saying that, that $250,000 really is two hundred twenty five dollars today, which is what I'm showing. That's 2%, by the way. Yeah. By the way, that is 2%. That's 2% drop per year. All right. Well, then I'm hopefully calibrated pretty good, right? At least for you. All right. So this is, this is something I've been doing by, by about four years now, and every year I have to change this a little bit. But and the reason I like this example, the farm I grew up on, we had a John Deere 3010. My cousin has a John Deere 3020 right now. It's just a tractor I know very well. So this is to show you how inflation can mask depreciation. So a John Deere 3020, state of the line in 1972, if you bought that new, how much would it have cost you in 1972 dollars? About $10,000. A, a good John Deere 3020 today, not a mint show piece, but a good working 3020, what, what's that going to cost you today? About, this, about the same amount, $10,000. So I have a bunch, of, and by the way, the reason I started doing this is five years ago when I, I did a, a more rudim, you know, a basic version of what we're doing today, I'd have people come up to me and say, my equipment doesn't depreciate. I when I when I was growing up, we had a 1960 or 70 tractor, and I can it's worth as much today as what I bought it for. Of course, they were they were ignoring what inflation. So, anyways, so I decided, okay, if you can't beat them, join them. Let's let's show what it did. So they're right. It doesn't look like it depreciated, right? Um, so if we adjust that ten thousand nineteen seventy two dollars to two thousand nineteen dollars, and I did this last night. Guess what we come up with? 40, 50, keep going up, keep going up, $61,000. Did that tractor depreciate? Yes. Now, in fairness, most of that depreciation probably occurred in the first 10, 15 years, and after that was probably stay at the inflation rate. Uh, but folks, don't get lured in believing that, that equipment doesn't depreciate. It does. And yes, we can get in, in kind of unique situations like when China was, to, you know, we were sending all, every piece of scrap metal that we had that, yeah, in the short run, things can get out of whack and you can have appreciation of equipment. But in general, folks, that's what, what I think you're going to see over time. It does. <laughs> it does. Until you get, exactly, until you get ready to replace it. So anyways. All right, so this is what we're going to use. This gentleman is saying that he thinks it's reasonably well calibrated. And again, I'm glad to run this, a custom run for your farm. Actually, I've got everything set up. It's real easy to do. You've got to do kind of the hard work of figuring out what you know, total dollars, what inflation rate you want to use, those sort of things. Um, so let me explain. We're going to look at this same graph a few different times. So let me kind of work you through it the first time. This would be just for the, the scenario where you've got $250,000, quarter million dollars of initial capital invested in that equipment with the depreciation at 2% that we're, we're talking about for the fixed depreciation. Um, so on the bottom, that's how many tons of hay that you produce per year on the bottom. On the left-hand side, that would be your combined depreciation and interest cost divided by the total number of hay, total tons of hay that you produce on a year. And we'll give you context for these in a minute. So let's just pick a number here. This is usually the best way to understand what's going on. So let's just pick a number. So let's say that you, with this equipment, you produce, on average, about 1,000 tons of hay per year. The way you use this diagram is you just draw a line straight up from 1,000 until you hit that, that graph, and then draw a line straight over horizontally to that left-hand side. And then you try to read what that dollar amount is. So what would that be roughly? About 17, 1750. So in other words, this in this particular producer, if they're if they have that equipment line, they're producing that amount of hay per year. So again, just for context, a thousand tons would be how many acres of alfalfa? Two to two hundred and fifty, somewhere in there. Just for context. They have a total of about seventeen or eighteen dollars in depreciation interest on a per ton basis. Now for context, think about what that alfalfa is worth on a per ton basis. And it's, I usually do this same, again, more basic analysis with typical cow quality hay, and there it's really easy because you say, well, if it's worth six or seventy dollars and you've got close to twenty dollars in fixed costs, you probably are a little bit high there. Uh, but for alfalfa, it's a whole different ball game, right? You're, you're a much higher, so you also, especially if you're doing small squares, you've got a whole lot more labor, so if you can increase your equipment costs and reduce your labor costs, 
there's an easy trade off there. So it's not as simple as with cow quality hay. I would say that you're in the good range there that you can be profitable. In fact, you could go up probably a little bit with typical alfalfa type hay. So that's good. In other words, we're probably not overcapitalized in this scenario. Any questions in terms of how this works? Does that all make sense, how you do that? All right. All right, let's pick another example. So let's say we're, we're making about 1,500 tons of hay per year. Um, so that would be what? Uh, how many acres we're talking there? About 350, 350 acres of hay roughly. Um, that brings our fixed cost down to what? About $14, total depreciation interest divided by the total number of tons. There you definitely are in a good situation with all, even, even with cow quality, hey, you're, you're getting in the range where if you're doing everything else right, you might actually make a profit. Um, now here's, on the flip side, what if you're only making 500 tons of hay there? So that might be 100 to 125 acres, right? What, what goes on with your fixed costs now? Start shooting up, right, real quick. Now, I don't know what the magic number is for alfalfa hay, again, with, with cow quality hay, I usually say about $15 a ton is, is probably, if you're above that, you're, you're probably not going to be able to make a profit on your hay operation. That's if you're doing everything else right. But for alfalfa, it's a whole different ballgame. I don't know what that number is, but my guess is you're probably in the range where you, you, you probably need to start thinking about reducing those costs. I don't know that for sure. That's just my gut feeling. Uh, but again, there is a trade-off there, with, especially if you're doing small squares in terms of if you, if you get better or higher dollar values equipment, you're reducing labor costs, you know, that, that might be a good trap. I just don't know for sure. Um, so to me, whether we're doing alfalfa or cow quality hay, whatever, to me, and this would change for cow quality hay, but to me there are two very distinct portions of that diagram. One is here where it's almost what? Straight up and down. And the other is where? Down there where it's almost flat. Now obviously you all know where you probably want to shoot for, right? where it's flat or, or reasonably flat, right? Um, now, to help you understand why that is occurring, in other words, why that changes so quickly, let's just, this would be every, these are all the details, and I, I hate to even cover it. So there's tons of hay produced. There's our base depreciation, so $5,000 per year. doesn't matter if we park it in the barn, put 250 hours or, or two, or I said hours, I meant tons, 250 tons or 2,000 tons. Uh, that base depreciation is going to stay the same. It's that use depreciation that will change. It's, you know, it's from $1,000 to $8,000. And then interest, and I know this is probably confusing. You'd think that interest would stay the same. It doesn't quite. So first of all, if, if you took $250,000 and you multiply that by 4%, what would you get? $10,000. All these are less than 10. I'm not going to go into details why, but just think about the quick explanation. There's a long and a quick. The long is going to take 15 minutes. I'm not going to take you through that. Every year when I do this, I've got to think about it myself, and I, I have to use examples to make sense. But think, just think very quickly about a mortgage. When you start a mortgage, it's, it's almost all interest, right? And as you pay it down, think of depreciation as paying it down. It goes from interest more to paying it off. Uh, that's the short answer. It's not exact, but that's the short answer of explaining that. But what, let me go back. Regardless, there's not a whole lot of difference, right? It, it's not completely fixed, but there's not a whole lot of difference there. So we add up our total fixed costs, basically about 15,000 to 20,000. Now this is, this is why it works the way it does. So let's take the two extremes here, so 250 tons of hay produced a year and 2,000. If we go from 250 to 2,000, how much did our total fixed cost change by? 5,000, put it in percentage terms though. Only about what, 33%, right? How much additional, now put this in percentage terms, how much how much additional hay did you produce? Eight times, which I think is what, 900% or something like that? So you divide a small number by a big number, what does that do to your fixed costs? Makes them go down real quick, and that's what we see here. That's essentially what is driving that. Fixed costs are increasing, but your total hay production is increasing so much more, it brings those fixed costs down real quick. That's what's driving that dynamic. Before we go to the other scenarios, any questions at this point? We're good? All right. So now, and, and there's actually $150,000 one that I'm not showing the details just because I, and how we're doing on time, because I can skip one of these if I need to. Okay, I think we're, I think we're good. Um, 
I'll go through these a little bit quicker. So here's the $100,000 hay equipment, and you will see the 150, the, the graph for the 150, but just here's an example of $100,000 outlay. Uh, two tractors, blah, 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 blah. Again, don't worry so much about individual pieces, just how you would come up in terms of if you add all your equipment up. There's an example of $100,000 in, in hay capital. Uh, the only thing that I'm changing here is that base depreciation. It goes from five to two. But coincidentally, it's still at that 2% per year for the equipment in terms of it's still, it's still coming down by 2%. You just have less of it, so it's less total dollars amount. Um, so let's just look at So let's do the same 500 tons that we had before. And I, I should have made a note. I th so when we had the $250,000 of hay equipment, I think at 500 tons, we were at what, 25, 37, are you sure? 37. Can someone look? Just Anyway, so something more than that. <laughs> I do know. 30 something. Okay, so now we're at what? So if we produce the same amount of hay, we went from 30 some down to what? $15 a ton. So in other words, now we would rather probably have $250,000 equipment, right? We can pretty much guarantee my air conditioner is working in the summertime. Uh, but in other words, you, you kind of have to have the equipment that matches your farm. That's the main thing I'm trying to get here. So, so probably we're, we're definitely in a range here where we can make money. Now, what if we're only making 250 tons of hay? So this is one that may have been 37 or something. Now, now we're, again, with alfalfa quality hay, I think we're in the range that we can still make money there. But we, I guarantee if we had the $250,000 of equipment there, our, our fixed costs would be way too high. Um, here's the $50,000 that no one wants to have or admit to, uh, but, I, but I know of a number of farms that are in this, this scenario and they're, and they're doing just fine. They're smaller farms. Um, so we've got two tractors. By the way, both those are more expensive than, than my tractor. <laughs> I don't make hay. I just clip pastures and mostly. And, uh, we've got a bale. So we have all the equipment. It's, it's all obviously used. Um, so tractor number one may have been that 30-20, right, in really good shape with, with relatively low hours. Um, and, and we call it 50,000. So could you make some decent alfalfa hay with that equipment? Yeah, you may not be making 1,000 a, a tons a year, but you could, it'll get the job done for the right farm. And that's what we want to look at here. So here's 250 tons. So here before, um, we're now with 200. So, Okay, so at 500 tons with a $100,000 hay capital, we were at $15. So at half that 250 tons, we're, we're now at 15. So could we make 150 tons of hay with that equipment? And with it? The answer is probably, yeah. We're getting that to about 25. You wouldn't do that with hay quality hay, but for alfalfa, you could probably do it. So in other words, again, that equipment, again, most people aren't going to want to admit to wanting to have that, but for a small enough farm, if all you're doing, so 150 tons of hay would be how many acres? Like 30, 40 acres of, of alfalfa hay? So for the right small farm, that might be what they need to have if they actually want to be profitable with their hay operation. Here's where I put everything together, and I include that $150,000 capital, and, and it goes from right to left, so the blue, let me, the blue is the $250,000, the black is $150,000, the yellow is $100,000, and the green on the far left is $50,000. So here you can kind of look at them all, compare them all together. And the way I would maybe do this is, is let's say that you're getting into making hay or something, and, and you, you, you figure out you're going to probably produce 500 tons of hay a year. I would just draw a line up and, and then look at these and evaluate them, comparing against them. You don't I'll obviously I'll always pick the lowest one. The way I would do this is start from the top and say, if I have $250,000 equipment, what would be my fixed cost? It looks like $32, $33 a ton. If I went down to $150,000, what difference would that be saving me? It would look like, what's that difference between the two? About $12 a ton. Uh, if you're making 500 tons of hay, could you get the job done well with that $150,000 equipment? That's what you'd have to kind of ask yourself. I, I'll let you answer that on your own. Um, now, if you went from one hundred fifty to one hundred thousand dollars of equipment, that's what you're saving. So, in other words, it's 
it, it really isn't buying you a whole lot, right? You're only saving a few dollars per ton. There's going to be some trade-off in terms of labor or, or repairs with that. So my guess is there, if I'm making that choice, I'd pick the $150,000 equipment over the $100,000. Um, now, if, if we go way to the tail there, so if, if you're making putting up a lot of alfalfa and, and your, your choice is between the two hundred fifty and the 150000 there, again, the difference there is what? Not a whole lot, right? So in other words, if, I'm making, if I was making that much alfalfa, I would probably go for the $250,000 of equipment there. In other words, you, you, the, the, point, the main point I'm trying to get is you kind of have to size it for your farm, your particular farm, not what you want. And if, if all you're making is that 250 tons of hay, again, kind of start from there. The blue's off, off the chart, so we don't even worry about that. That would be how much you're saving going from 150 to $100,000. Um, and I would probably go down to $100,000. Main thing is, again, that equipment needs to kind of be appropriate size for your particular farm. Um, again, I mentioned this earlier. So if you want me, if it, and it's actually real easy to do. I mean, you just have to kind of do a few things. I can, I can do a custom run for your farm. Uh, again, we can do it by phone, email, or even I'll be here a good chunk of the day. I can get out my laptop and do it. Um, other questions? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So the question is, did I allow in any of the costs for downtime or even extra repairs? And, and the answer is no. So you've got to, you've got to balance that in. So in other words, yes. Yeah, so in other words, if if you've got to, if if you go down from let's say 250 to 150, and, and that's saving you $15 a ton, then you've got to build in what you're talking about to counteract that. Now, my guess is you, you'd have a lot of down, downtime to, before you got anywhere close to that $15 a ton. But yes, that's the trade-off that you are going to have to make. Absolutely. That's a good question. Same with the repairs. You're going to have extra repairs. You go down, you've got to build those in. All right, then let me paraphrase the question. This actually is a really good question, and I'm going to take it two different directions. So I think the question they're asking is, you're not making alfalfa hay right now, is that correct? But they're thinking to do it. Now, they have a lot of the, the equipment they need. Now, in other words, you're making cow quality hay. This is a really good question. So in other words, the way I would view this, at least initially, is, is that you're going to have a, a, a cow quality hay enterprise, and you're going to have an alfalfa enterprise. So now you're going to kind of split. So for a lot of this equipment, the tractors, you're going to have almost no cost. And even for your rake and, and baler, et cetera, your, 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 cost, your, your total fixed cost is just going to be that portion that you're using for the alfalfa, which I'm guessing is going to be a lot smaller than what we're showing here. So in other words, it's going to be easier for you to pencil out because you've already got a lot of this equipment. Versus if you had none of it and you had to go out and buy everything, then it's a whole different ballgame. <clears throat> So it's, it's going to be easier for them to make this pencil out on the fixed cost side just because essentially they're sharing it amongst a, a lot more enterprises. That's a really good question. Other questions? All right. 